right, welcome to my studio. I'm about to uh, do a dog portrait, and I'm going to start with um, with toning my canvas, and I'm actually going to tone it with uh, cerulean blue, just because the dog has a lot of burnt sienna in it, and which is kind of an orangey color, so those will be a good compliment. So I'm going to go ahead and tone my canvas with some blue, and then we'll get started. I'm just using a uh, paper towel watered up because I think that's a little faster than using a paintbrush. All right, let's get started. I'm going to use a I also try to look at where things lie in relation to each other. Like the edge of this ear, you can see where, you know, this is where the body of the dog is coming down. So I'm going to put that in there. I'll try to get a little lower on here so that uh, when this gets framed, it won't have that white edge showing on there. That's a tough lesson. I'm going to step back. You always should step back and take a look at what you've done to see if you're, you know, in the ballpark. Um, look like that right ear needs to come down a little bit. Oh, here we go. Oh, that was a big blob. I like to, I don't know, just check and see if this length is maybe, say, compared to the total width. You can see that. From here to here, oh, sorry about that. From here to here is almost the same with this, you know, as the ears. It comes a little further out. If I was to mark that, that's pretty darn close. I'm going to go with that. All right, so what I want to do now is uh, sometimes I will use a Q-tip to do this next step, but because I've got a large area, I'm going to use paper towel in this case. Toilet paper. What you want to do is I like to try to lift off some of the highlights. Try to get a little bit of this sketch in here. Looking at the direction of the, you know, where the ears are going, where the eyes are going to be. I'm going to get the tilt. I'm going to have to step in your way here. I want to get this tilt to match this. They look like these are pretty even, so I am going to sort of get my paintbrush and find the angle of the dog's head and try... Oh, well, yeah, that's pretty close. I'm just trying to get the, the correct angle here. A third of the way. Let's just try to dot those in. Yeah, I'm gonna try to make sure that I'm keeping my, you know, my angles here. All right, let's get back into some real time for a few minutes. Um, I did a couple of changes. I noticed that the right ear was actually supposed to be a little higher up, which meant the left ear also had to be adjusted. Um, as I go, I just try to see things. Um, I, I actually looked in a mirror uh, at, the, uh, at the picture to, uh, to help me see some mistakes. Um, like right over here, what I do is try to follow the light patterns. I try not to think of it as this is the line of the 
the dog's neck or the face or anything like that. What I'm trying to do is say, well, I see light right here, so let me wipe some of this paint off and just follow my light patterns. And what that does is, I call it accidental drawing. You, you All of a sudden, after following the light patterns, you realize, whoa, I've got a picture here. It's starting to come together. This up. I still think there's something wrong right in here. I'm going to keep working at it here. If you're just not into drawing, um, you can just make a copy and trace it onto a canvas. I like drawing mine. I feel more connected to the painting. Of the, um, the dark tones already on the dog, so I'm going to start popping highlights after I put the uh, eyes and the uh, nose in. And I'm just going to do just a little, little you know, quick shot of that. Um, I'm actually, I don't normally use black, but these eyes are, they're really dark in here. So I'm going to take some black and maybe go with a little bit of purple and some burnt sienna. But see, I've already got this burnt sienna on here, and so I want to try and get this even darker. And when I was in high school, my art teacher said whenever I'm doing portraits to always start with this left eye. I don't know why. I wish I would have asked because People always ask me, well, why do you start with the left eye? Well, the teacher told me, I just didn't ask her why. Maybe somebody out there knows. All I know is that that's what I do, is I always start with the left eye. And there's a little bit of a eyelid kind of thing right there. I can actually take, I, I take my paint brushes and I put them in a pencil sharpener and it allows me to scratch off. I could also use a fine point Q-tip, but I'm just going to go ahead and just scratch this off. And that creates that eyelid. And over here. And again, don't get too wrapped up about being exactly perfect at this stage, because again, we are building our details. Now I know that with the dog's eye, that there's also a little bit of a lighter area there. Also, a little bit of the white of the eye is right there, and uh, since I've got a lot of dirty color on my paintbrush, I'm actually just going to dip into a little bit of white, and it's probably, you know, it's going to create just the gray that I need. Kind of right inside there. Looks like that could be a little bit lighter. I put my hand behind the paintbrush when I'm trying to compare my, my colors and values. Uh, normally I'm working from a photograph, but because I'm using my uh, iPad to do that, I put my hand behind it so that it uh, takes away some of that uh, reflection. Because if I do this, then this looks much brighter, but when I put my hand behind it, I'm pretty close to the value, but I'm actually seeing a little bit of green in that, so I'm just going to add a little bit of green to my mixture. Probably added too much, but we'll find out. That's a lot closer than I thought. I'm going to go with it. Again, I'm just trying to follow light patterns. By following light patterns, instead of trying to just draw these little nuances of the dog, it makes the, the, the actual drawing part of this a little easier.